Welcome to PV Magazine Live. We're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Anaheim, and I'm joined by Lydia Sakarik, the Deputy Director of the SunShot Program at the U.S. Department of Energy. Lydia, thank you for taking the moment to talk with us. Thank you for speaking with us today. So today's been a big day. This morning we heard uh, Vice President Joe Biden talk a little bit about the solar industry, and this is accompanied by a rather large announcement from SunShot, uh, I believe $102 million in grants. Can you give us an overview of this new funding round and, and what some of the goals are? Absolutely. It is a very wide range of activities. So we announced two different types of activities. One is an announcement for new funding opportunities in two different areas. One is in what we call technology to market programs for funding innovative product and business solutions across the entire solar value chain. And that's a 30 million announcement. And the second program that we're also launching today is for advanced photovoltaic R&D solutions that will take the cost-cutting progress that the industry has enjoyed from the commercial technologies even further beyond what we know today. That's a $20 million announcement in PV R&D. Accompanying the new funding announcements, we are also announcing awards for the entities that have competed and been selected to receive cooperative agreements and grants from DOE across a range of opportunities. We have a concentrated solar po power um, program called Apollo. We have a lot of acronyms that spell out a word um, that is looking at a really wide range of advanced CSP technologies from thermal storage to um, advanced power cycles to supercritical CO2 turbines, any number of things. Um, to um, announcement of program that we call PREDICTS. Now this is a focus for PV R&D program in looking at the physics of reliability of modules that directly impacts bankability and cost reduction of financing of PV modules. And last but not least, we've also announced SPARC. It is a designation program for the communities that have um, been leaders in deploying and streamlining solar installment. Um, and we have, in addition to that, um, announced uh, another parts of our sister programs, the DOE announced um, through the state energy programs, helped, uh, th there's a program that actually helps states deploy energy um, solutions across the entire spectrum. And I think coupled with the recent announcement for clean power plan, um, the states are definitely going to want to look for technical assistance in how they deploy clean energy programs. In addition to that, the Rural um, Energy Deployment Program from USDA um, loans has announced a new initiative today, and that is a combined of 120 million. Wow, that's, that's a lot of activity across a lot of areas. You know, I noticed that in the past, balance of systems has been an area that we, you know, a lot of people looking at this for cost reduction. I noticed that DOE has been looking at this as well. Uh, can you talk about some elements in here that address BOS costs? Absolutely. So we address BO, BOS costs um, really fall into two different categories. One is the hardware balance of system, and um, we really look at the, the gamut of that. That's anything from the inverter to racking, wiring, any number of things, as well as the non-hardware balance of system. So as we all know, and I'm sure anybody in the industry watching this knows that anywhere from 50 to 70 percent of the system cost is in non-hardware um, operations. Um, we tackle that across a pretty wide range of activities. Um, some of them, um, and I did not actually mention one of the things that was announced today, is the Sunshot Prize, um, where we're actually funding, where we're announcing our finalists um, of those who have applied to compete, ultimately, um, in a race to seven-day solar. Um, the average across the country is on the order of three to six months from the time that um, a consumer might want to install solar to the time that it's interconnected and being credited on their electricity bill. We have five teams across the country from Connecticut to Missouri to California competing in trying to bring that process down to seven days. Time is money. And so that is a way, a really, really major way of combating soft cost. When it comes to the hardware balance of system cost, our tech to market program um, is, is what we all often call an open solicitation. Uh, we look at innovation across the entire solar value chain and we look at the innovation across the entire product cycle development and so we have these different tiers that companies can map onto where they are in a development cycle. Um, for the hardware balance system we have had some very interesting companies in our incubator program in the past and we're hoping to see more of that solution because it can really streamline the installation and the overall and bring down the overall cost of the system. Absolutely. So to get back to the seven-day challenge, so who is competing in the seven-day challenge? Is this for solar companies or is this for municipalities and governments to streamline the process? It is a combination of all of those entities. The teams are formed um, in some cases, so we have one of the teams is just a, a company, an installer company. One of the teams is a state entity. 
that is looking at an entire state. And in the rest of the cases, they are in fact teams that range from three to 10 entities uh, combining uh, companies, installers, site surveyors, um, financiers, uh, local governments, and utilities. This to me is a fascinating area of co soft cost reduction because we have such a significant, well one is our entire system of permitting and you know the, the, the paperwork that you have to go through to actually put a PV system in isn't controlled by the federal government. It's controlled by local entities, it's controlled by municipalities, and here we have the federal government taking a role trying to move some of these decentralized entities, which in the United States have a fair amount of power in this regard, down the path. How's that process been? It has been uh, very um, educational for us in trying to understand what actually works and we are continually reassessing the effectiveness of the programs that we're funding and so starting from the programs where we have um, formed teams of 20 some um, groups across the country in our solar rooftop challenge in its first iteration we have taken some of those teams to, um, to slightly larger geographic areas and so trying to find ways to streamline permitting and installation interconnection in one um, jurisdiction in fact has helped neighboring jurisdictions streamline that as well so what we find is really helpful is to try to do two things give carrots in forms of grants and technical assistance where we can help entities connect and we can motivate them to connect. Set some of these clear goals and targets that can help us with the cost reduction and then share the best practices across the country. And in fact we have studied and correlated decrease in the cost of installation in the areas where we have had these teams work on streamlining the practices. Of course it is a very unique um, solution in every one of these jurisdictions. There are 18,000 jurisdictions in a country and 3,000 utilities and each one of them approaches solar installations in a different manner. We try hard to identify solutions that are scalable and so that is probably the one advantage that we might have at a federal level that we can see a lot of that at once and be able to then point different entities to say hey look at how different groups have solved this issue. Fascinating. You know, another thing that I saw in these DOE awards is that there's over $30 million for concentrating solar power technologies. CSP is not something that I've heard a lot about at the show. It's not something that I see a lot of deployment going on. Why was CSP decided as a strategic choice in this round of grants? CSP has always been a core part of our program. So SunShot, which is really a solar energy technologies program, works on two different conversion technologies, photovoltaic and concentrated solar power. We have continued to fund R&D in concentrated solar power. In this case, uh, it might be noticed more because it is a very large announcement um, at once, but we have uh, strategically shifted in what it is we're also funding in the CSP space. Now, it is an industry that, just like photovoltaics, has matured in the deployment and the types of systems and the types of problems that need to be tackled. One of the challenges that CSP faces in general is the very large size of the power plants that are being built. Um, what that means is the cost of the capital, capital that can be tied up for many years, access to capital, and also um, somewhat restricted geographic areas because of the need for high nor uh, direct normal incidence light. Now, what we're hoping to to spur with some of these um, uh, awards that we had just announced today is a range of innovation that will enable us to do several different things. One is to make the plants much, much more efficient. That is a pretty significant lever to bringing down the cost. And, and we all probably know that the CSP uh, levelized cost of electricity has not gone down as rapidly as it has in photovoltaics. So we need to keep driving those costs down. One way to do that is to increase the plant efficiency. If the plant can operate at a higher temperature, the thermodynamics gives us a much, much higher efficiency. So looking at advanced power cycles that can operate at higher efficiency, looking at more compact turbines and power blocks, and so advanced um, fluids like supercritical um, carbon dioxide, for example, is something that needs very special handling and we need to develop new materials, new types of structures to be able to develop those turbines. In order to have storage, which could be a major advantage for CSP power plants, we also need to develop materials and systems that can handle corrosive materials at higher temperatures. Um, given all of that, um, we're also hoping that one day we will have plants that can be built at a smaller scale, on the order of tens of megawatts, and so we don't need to be putting up um, gigawatt scale plants that require multi-billion dollars and, and a certain amount of risk with a prolonged um, construction. And so those are some of the new areas of focus for us, the new materials. Fascinating. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Dr. Skarik. Thank you.
and this is PV Magazine Live. We're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Anaheim, and I've been joined by Dr. Lydia Sakarik, the Deputy Director of the SunShot Program at the U.S. Department of Energy.